Hello everyone, in this video I'm going to show you how to tie this fly and uh, more importantly this is one of my giveaway flies so I'm gonna explain why I like this fly so much and it's not particularly difficult to fly to tie but there are some tricks that will definitely make your tying easier so without any further ado let's get into a relatively short video uh, first of all I'm gonna put hook and the tungsten bead in device I'm using relatively universal hook it's 14 uh, it's a little bit on the large side for me right now because I like to use smaller but what I'm going to do is I'm not going to use the whole hook here uh, in turn I'm going to read to get a smaller fly and a bigger hook which will increase my hook rate and uh, the stronger hook will hold fish better it's size 14 as I said Chinese brand so use whatever hook you want now for the underbody and the whole tying, I'm using UTC 70 linear thread in cream color. Uh, the reason why I'm using this one is because it's flat. And if you watch my videos more regularly, uh, you'll probably notice that I like threads that are flat. Uh, this is reverse jam hitch. And now let's go. One two three four wraps transfer the tag and transfer your hand keeping the tension all the time now no tension pull towards you this one is a little bit okay pull towards me so no tension pull towards me now let me show you now no tension uh pull towards you now no tension pull towards you and this tag is not rotating as you can see so that's all about where, when and how you apply pressure on your thread. If you apply constant pressure on this thread, um, this tag end or tails, if you're tying tails, uh, is definitely going to rotate. Now let me finish the, the tying in materials. For the tail I'm going to use Coque de Leon. Uh, for, the, for the body I'm going to use uh, Peacock Eye and right about here as you can see I already used a couple of them uh, but I'm going to strip it of course a little bit of Vivas orange thread but you can use pink uh, or whatever color for hotspot you want and for the thorax I'm going to use some of my uh, hairs mask UV dubbing so I'm going to explain to you why I like to use natural peacock uh, as opposed to the ones that you can buy in a shop it's not a big deal but for me it makes a big difference so right now I'm gonna attach Coq de Leon I'm just gonna pinch out a couple of barbs like so align the tips you don't need to use too many and like so this is perfect counterspin the thread it jumps into your fingers as you can see so you don't need to use pinch and loop to secure your materials now upward 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 pressure upward pressure and that's how you do it now look at the tail no pressure upward pressure no pressure upward no upward and then go down as you can see it stays on the top of the hook upward and now I'll just go with one thread wrap below to lift these tails up a little bit. Did I do a good job or not? Let's see. Yeah, it's okay. Now, when I start wrapping again, I'm gonna wrap over the peacock quill, but first I need to strip it. I'm gonna go into my with my scissors, cut one and then cut this one as well because I don't need it right now and use your index finger and thumb thumbnail and just go don't go all the length at once I mean it's possible but sometimes it breaks so if you go slowly thicker part and then go into thinner part it's going to be easier uh, then go another side and if you use too much pressure you're gonna do this you're gonna cut your barb at the top but that's not too much 
it's not concerning me too much right now. I'm not concerned about it too much now. So cut it. I have more than enough length over here because this is going to to be like a rib. I'm not going to 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 go full cover with this one. Now the reason why I prefer this one to let's say polish quills, which are amazing material by the way, uh, is because they're not greasy. Polish quills can be greasy at times, and uh, in return when I apply some uh, UV on the top of it it doesn't cover the whole polish quills. Now I'm gonna counter spin my bobbin again so the thread jumps where it belongs and this is it on the side. Now as I wrap forward I overlap slightly and I create slight taper. If I need more taper I just need to cut this a little bit. Now if I need more taper, I'm gonna just do a couple of more wraps. Now I need to secure this bead and I do this by holding it with my nail and just getting too much thread here and creating this little bump which will in, in return prevent it from spinning around, especially when I add uh, UV afterwards or super glue when sometimes I use super glue. Now I'm gonna counter spin bobbin every once in a while to make the thread flat because it's much easier to get smoother body and it's much easier to wrap your Pika quill when you have nice, nicely, uh, nicely flattened thread. Okay, it's not good. Let me see. I didn't flatten the thread properly. It's too much, I guess. Yeah, it's too much. No. Okay. Now let me just flatten it again, nicely. Okay. I insist on this because it's very important. I mean, if you have bumps on here, this one is not going to adhere properly. Now, the reason why I use yellow thread here is because I want thread, oops, I want this thread to show uh, through the through the quill, through the barb, stripped barb, and uh, I want it to show because when you have those insects when they wiggle on those segments where they have where they meet those are ribs we call them ribs but those segments actually they are lighter lighter in color than, than the general color so let me just rib this so in open turns cover the body Okay, this is relatively delicate material, so you don't need to apply too much pressure, and that's why you need to protect it later. Like that's very, very important. If you just leave it like this, you don't even need a fish to break the fly. The camera is too close, so it's a little bit tricky to use hackle pliers and wrap the, the, the barb. Now I'm gonna cut the, the barb. If you can leave a gap over here because you will need it. Just one, two, Now, you can apply varnish right now, or UV cure, whatever you're using, or you can add, which I'm going to do, the thread first, orange one, which is going to be hotspot. And as you can see, I'm going to leave this part here for the thorax. So I'm going to create 
a little bit of a hot spot over here in a couple of layers that's important because the thread is going to be more visible and this thread is vivus it's not easy to make it too like very flat so be careful when you use it for uh, for hotspots like this because it can slip so we just again one two I'm gonna finish it cut it as close as possible like so and then apply some UV resin now UV resin is this one as I said and look at the drop I'm using it's like very very small drop I'm gonna go lengthwise and then just gonna distribute it along the hook shank the less you use the better you don't need to use some ridiculous amounts of this uh, you're not getting any dur more durable fly you're not getting a more beautiful fly at least I think so and the thinner fly will actually sink better than the thick one so I'm gonna just cover everything here and that's it now look how nicely this UTC thread looks when it's covered with UV now okay this is it now I need let's say maybe 20 seconds of uh, time to cure this resin so I'm just gonna speed it up So this is it. I mean, you can fish it like this. Just finish off with black thread over here, and that's like finished quilting on fly. Now, uh, just for the reasons of uh, strength of this thread, I'm gonna start with using a uh, nano silk. Okay. When I'm sure it's secured, I'm gonna cut this waist end, and now. I'm gonna split it and use a little bit of dubbing. Now the reason why I switched the thread is purely because this thread is super strong so I can spin the bobbin a little bit harder and uh, make this dubbing loop more tight which I couldn't do with the UTC thread which is not super strong so if you twist it too much you're gonna end up with a broken thread okay now as you can see it's not too much just a little and I'm gonna pinch out a little bit of this so I'm spinning the bobbin a lot and then I'm gonna help the thread spin further up and as you can see like I twist the thread and it cords even more now these are pretty well secured but I want to pull out the excess so I don't want too many of these hairs and then use this gap that you created here and just go slide down with your thread and now this is it I'm gonna create the whip finish and finish off the fly I can cover the knot if I, if I need and notice those hairs here I'm gonna hide them like so with thread push them and that's it now if you want to hide this knot you can do this it's a very easy thing to do just, just take some fur some finer fibers if you can I'm gonna remove those guard hairs so finer fibers attach to your thread in not so long dubbing noodle not too long and then when you're satisfied it has to be thin and tight just go with your web finishing tool and then immediately pull this tag against the hook and then go with this 
and you have your node secured. Pull out and that's it. And guys, this is usually something that I would use and imitate mayflies. As I said, this stays a little bit tacky, but after sun, sun treatment, it's, it's, it won't be any more tacky. But fish won't mind at all. Now, why I like this fly? It imitates mayflies before everything, but it also imitates caddis pupa. Uh, depends how you fish it. Uh, it's very universal, it's very durable, it sinks pretty well because it's not too uh, bushy, it doesn't have too many legs, it's not, it's not too fat. Uh, even though I'm used to using just 3mm bead, this can sink quite deep. It helped me in many situations when fish were picky, they decided to go after this one. Uh, the hotspot is rather uh, discreet, it's not like very obvious because it's covered a little bit by those legs and it's very very uh, important that you do those legs as sparse as possible you can do CDC that's also amazing material for this or even partridge uh, so use it in a setup of one or two flies and have fun so guys thank you very much for watching if you like this video please give it a like subscribe and see you next time